Hello everyone, this is Samuel. I welcome you all to another session of long overdue coffee and paper. Since I slack in making of these videos, uh, read two week gap between the last video and this video, I would go ahead and restructure this video so that you people get more benefits out of this video. Uh, so this video, as usual, would contain coffee, discussion of paper, and we would also go and do the implementation of same. Alright everyone, let's dive deep into the details of the paper in discussion today. And the paper is called GLOVE Global Vector for Word Representation. Um, Basically, uh, this paper was introduced by Pennington, Socher, and Manning at Stanford, and it was published in 2014. Uh, um, 14. I highly recommend to check out the course content at uh, 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 Stanford for Natural Language Processing. Uh, it has been an inspiration for me, and I've completed the whole course, and I find it very sound for complete knowledge of uh, all the techniques that are currently in progress. Um, so the, what, the objective of this paper basically is um, at one side you have got uh, techniques of matrix factorization and on the other side you have techniques which we discussed in our last videos like um, word work and other uh, skip gram model and continuous bag of words model so how to combine the best of those two because one comes up with very complex patterns the other has got statistical information and how can we combine both of them into one model and achieve something better and more so uh, that's what uh, basically is the uh, objective of this paper is to come up with a uh, global log bilinear regression model and that take advantages of the two major model families uh, matrix factorization and local context window based methods which is which is what I just explained beforehand um, so yeah uh, there has been some recent uh, uh, works that were done at that time and those were basically around latent semantic analysis and all other variations of those uh, so what are, what are basically the positives that we have on these things is basically we have more statistics as I mentioned before. Uh, what you also get is fast training uh, unless your matrix goes really crazy, the co matrix goes really crazy big. Um, uh, the negatives that are basically is uh, you get only word similarity, you don't get to analyze more complex patterns as we discussed in our discussion of paper uh, by Mikhlov, uh, where we would see that we could do a lot of analogy tasks and other things. Um, then also, uh, when there's a disproportionate importance given to large counts of words occurring, um, so and we also saw the as mentioned, uh, uh, word to work and uh, uh, other models like neural network language model by Benjiu and other people. Um, so, what are the basic problems in those models? Is basically they scale with copper size and they don't uh, rely on the statistics that is being used. Um, but what they actually provide for in terms of value is they help us with a lot of downstream tasks. Uh, I'm gonna go and do separate videos on what kind of different downstream tasks you can do through those videos, but some of those would be like named entity recognition and other things. Um, but definitely I'm gonna do a video on uh, how would you do those tasks. It would be implementation video, so it's a basically a code share video. Um, then, um, of course, uh, as I mentioned, you can capture more complex patterns as compared to um, uh, as compared to the matrix factorization methods. So basically, we come up to combining the best of uh, two worlds, and which is matrix factorization, and then where to work models, and then we come up. The basic idea is the ratio between the probabilities of words appearing next to each other has more information than if you consider the words individually. 
uh, if you look at the uh, cost function theta is here represents oops I'm sorry sorry for that so theta basically is uh, all your parameters and then you have got your word vectors u and v and then you have your co-occurrence matrix and then you go over through all of the such pair of words and then you have a weight function to actually account for that disproportionate importance that we're giving to the large count of words um, which was a negative of a matrix uh, factorization methods um, what basically glove model actually gives us is um, we can come to find out is it's faster in training compared to word to work or matrix factorization it's scalable to huge huge corpus or corpus uh, then you get good performance even with small corpus or small vectors um, so basically what we conclude on this paper is uh, GLOVE is a new global bi log bilinear regression model. Uh, it provides for unsupervised learning of word representations uh, that it outperforms other models on uh, tasks like word analogy, word similarity and named entity recognition tasks. Um, so diving deep into the results, first we see uh, how does GLOVE perform in across different uh, different models including simple SVD uh, and we see that on word similarity task uh, GLOVE does pretty well uh, as compared to other of those models not only on word similarity we then do comparison on named entity recognition tasks and we come up with F1 scores and then we see that GLOVE's F1 score actually does much more better um, now talking about the training times basically uh, we do comparison with continuous bag of words and script gram model and then we see actually GLOVE outperforming over iterations um, in terms of accuracy um, to both script gram and continuous bag of words uh, but if you really want to ask about my preference I have personally felt that script gram is the best implementation for word to work uh, for word vectors. Uh, I usually use Skipgram in all my presentations. Uh, so implementations. Um, firstly, let me walk you through the uh, NLP, Stanford Groups, uh, GLOVE uh, uh, page. Uh, as you can see, they already have provided a code which you could basically go ahead and download and they have also a GitHub link with, from where you can also go and download the code so you can do either one of those um, you can actually download this code and see through all of these tasks uh, basically we'll be able to run through all of these tasks uh, what this basically talks about is um, finding similar words and then doing analogy task and uh, tasks like uh, superlatives like strong to stronger and all of those kind of um, patterns these were the downstream tasks actually we were thinking of achieving before and this is pretty interesting I highly recommend that uh, you guys go through this page and uh, try this code out it doesn't take a lot of time uh, for my implementation of the same I basically modified my earlier representation um, what it basically involves is uh, uh, reading of the same data set and going through the same data set. Um, the major change where it comes is in the loss function and the co-occurrence matrix. So basically we go ahead and we create the co-occurrence matrix over our batch size and then we keep going down and uh, um, define a loss functions which we basically came up uh, as I discussed in the theory um, once you're done with your loss function you try to run and best way to find out if your function is running well is basically your loss at each step should keep going down and you should start seeing words which are similar in nature and then you visualize those words 
basically and you get a word matrix uh, you get a graph like this when you try to visualize those things um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video um, please leave feedback as usual I've been quite a bit busy over the last few days uh, I'm going to do next is some application videos uh, for natural language processing I really want to do some LDA and LSA work uh, I want to share those um, so like take a bunch of reviews and do topic modeling and stuff like those uh, I need to explain some models for further doing these coffee and paper sessions uh, for that I thought since there is already a lot of content available online I would just refer to those content and what I would do in those sessions is basically come up with what is what was the research need at that time to actually come up with those models and how those models were a progression over the last models. That's what I'm aiming at. Uh, that's what I think that I could create new value over there. Um, so stay tuned and enjoy and thanks for watching the video.